Good afternoon, my name is Keo and uh, I'm from South Africa. Okay, my name is Franklin Chalale, I am from Lesotho. Hi everyone, I'm Ensley de Jong, I'm from Johannesburg. My name is Alexia Chagaka from Zimbabwe. Mm. Hello everyone, my name is Clifford Shabang. Uh, my name is Dionisio, but people call me Dio. Uh, my name is Brother Alistair, this is my son, Clyde Valencia. Brother Alistair, if I may ask, when were you introduced to the Advent movement, you and your son? Uh, through the grace of God, it was about almost 10 years, my brother, mm. that uh, the Lord has sent a beautiful friend and his wife on my way. Mm. And uh, I can still remember the first topic that, that uh, they brought under my attention was the state of the dead, because mm. I also had a, a distorted view. But I praise God if I'm looking back now to that, because from that time, uh, the, the, the truth it just started flowing into our lives mm. Mm. like a flood. Amen. 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 Okay, so do you um, just ask you when exactly is it that you were introduced to the Advent uh, movement? Okay, introduce. Uh, I'm not really sure, but I started hearing the call of God back in 2013 after the passing away of my mom, mm -hmm. because we used to go to you know some church that was not an Adventist church, but then. In that church, like, I never got to see who God really is, so mm -hmm. I never used to read my Bible, you know, praying something that I wouldn't do. So, by the passing away of my mom, that's when, like, you know, I started hungering more to understand who God is and what He wants us, what He wants from us. Okay, yes. okay. Hi, Brother Clifford. Uh, when is it that you were introduced to the Advent faith? I was introducing the Adventist faith around late in 2019. It happens that on that year, on the on the sec, on the first of September, is we moved to Heidelberg. Mm. And when I moved to Heidelberg, it happens that one of my neighbor was an Adventist. Mm. But back then, I was not aware that he was an Adventist. But I could see that he was someone who was doing, doing evangelism. Mm. So it happens that. I, I felt sick. I went to my neighbor, the first one, to, to find some help, maybe to pray, because I could see even them, they were church goers. Mm, mm. Then the neighbor introduced me to that neighbor, oh, okay. who, of which he led me, later on led me to Adventism. Amen. So I went to his home. I remember I knocked at night. I, fortunately, the gate was open. Then we entered, then I knocked at his door. Then I told him my problem. Then when I told him my problem, he let me in. Then he started to pray in his in his house. Wow. And then that's then that's where I started to get to know him better and started to share the word of the Lord as well. Mm -hmm. And then when I asked them, when I asked them, because now he was with his wife, yeah. When I started to to form that bond with him. So I asked them, say, which church are you from? Then he told me that they are Seventh-day Adventists. Mm. And for me, that was for the very first time hearing a Seventh-day Adventist. Yes. Amen. When were you introduced to the faith, brother Alex? Um, I, I was uh, 10 years, uh, 10 years, let me say like this. I was 10 years when I, yeah, it's my mother mm. that became a Seventh-day Adventist. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. When were you introduced to the Advent movement, brother? So, to be honest, I'd say, in a sense, I've been introduced to it all my life because mm. my family used to watch a lot of conspiracy videos. Oh. And in those videos, it all pointed to the papacy as being some sort of Illuminati organization. Sure. So, in that sense, I feel like we've been introduced to Adventists for many years. Oh. But in another sense, um, in 2019, providentially, God told us to move from El Dorado Park where we used to live and we moved to Florida mm. and in the first year we got there a couple of people had an evangelistic meeting where I think it was a seminar a Daniel and Revelation seminar mm. and so they presented all the truths like the, the main truths in terms of prophecy and so from there my journey kicked off and by God's grace I'm an Adventist today. Brother Franklin, if I may ask, when is it that you were introduced to the Advent movement? 
Okay, actually, uh, my parents, uh, both my parents are Seventh Adventists. Mm. They were church leaders. And so I could say that uh, the first time I became aware of this movement was when I was born in the, into that family. Sure, sure. Yeah. so it's, uh, it's been some years, yes? It's been many years, indeed. Um, I grew up since I was born. I, since I can remember, my parents were Adventists. So I kind of grew up in the church, but I never really gave my heart to the Lord till about three years, three, four years ago. And uh, about two years ago, I got baptized. How did you find out about Messengers of Present Truth Ministry? Well, I found out about Messengers of Present Truth Ministry. A sister from Cape Town side came to come and live with us for, for a time. She wanted to like get out and have the peace of nature surrounding her because she had some problems. And she introduced the, the channel to us. But at first, because there are many people who's preaching things that are not in accordance with the scripture and so on, my parents then didn't want to watch the videos at all. But after a while, I can't remember exactly what happened, but we finally watched one video of his, and my mother was like looking through scripture and testing everything of his. Is it right? Is, is he doing exactly what the Bible and the prophecy says? And ever since that time, we have like been watching his videos every we try and get every week's video downloaded and if we if we don't get download we wait and then we download them all and that's that's basically how i got to to know messengers of present truth brother frank if i may find out also how is it that you found out about messengers of present truth oh well that came as an interesting uh, story because a friend of mine in south africa out there in rustenburg sent me one of the videos of uh, the messengers of present truth mm. and that video that message impacted me so much so that i wanted to get some more from that one message and i started listening into what messenger of present truth had to, had to say wow yes. and that uh, if, if we may put a time stamp on that when was that initially this was in 2021 in 2021 yeah. uh, this was now after or during the period of covid was still raging in the countries yes basically i could say that yes mm. yes yes mm. so so when brother devon attended the meeting the camp meeting in johannesburg yes. uh, you were introduced initially to the minister of present truth yes, okay yes. okay i just wanted to clear that out oh there was another time that he was introduced yeah but to be honest, I didn't know much about the ministry back then. I just know this guy, I don't want anything to do with him. And so um, when I was doing the Bible studies actually with Brother Warren, mm -hmm. that's when, you know, he, he used to watch Devon, still does. Mm -hmm. And so he sort of introduced me to Devon's videos. So, yeah. Amen, amen, amen. Now, how did you find out about Ministry of Present Truth? Uh, Ministry of Present Truth, as myself, I find when was now where I came from at this moment, I come from Stenga. Mm. So in Stenga, we, uh, we have a small group uh, of four that we are doing Bible study each and every day. Mm. So when we was doing Bible study with each and every day, there's, there's, there was a brother of mine mm. that was uh, studying with um, uh, Devan, brother Devan, mm -hmm. and the brother, there's, there's some other brothers that yes. he was there studying. So, so that, uh, that brother, Introduced me to watch to watch the videos of what of Brother Devon. Mm -hmm. So when we was watching brother, the video of Brother Devon, this is where I started to watch, to learn and to uh, understand what yes, this is the truth that wow. we yeah wow. yes yes this was like this beautiful brother. Yeah. Now how is it that you found out about messengers of present truth? Especially the the end that uh, I first encountered with the one who introduced me to Adventism. Mm -hmm. So he was the one who, who was watching the Brother Devonese okay. videos on YouTube. Uh -huh. Then he would, whatever he, he was listening to, then he would share it with me. Mm, amen. So uh, how, is, how is it that you found out about Messengers of Present Truth? Messengers of Present Truth, you know, it was a link, you know. You mm -hmm. know, it starts from me, like, 
you first start here, then you know from there yeah, you it can just share, you leads can... you to to many mm -hmm. streams, you know. So it, it first started with uh, Walter Vade, mm -hmm. but then with Walter Vade, I was just watching him to you know, like just to have an understanding, so that when people speak about certain things, I know what they're speaking about. Mm -hmm. But then uh, with Messengers of Present Truth, uh, there's a guy on YouTube uh, called Attila. Mm -hmm. So yes. the name of his channel is Schools for Profit. Yes. So then I was subscribed to his channel, but then, you know, I used to watch his videos here and then, but then when I saw that he's, he's interviewing a South African guy, mm. that's when he caught my attention. Okay. You know? okay. And from there, I saw Devney's video mm -hmm. and, you know, I didn't, I didn't really give time to his videos because, I mean, Okay, I, I saw how he spoke because I believe that, you know, as, as much as you have the truth, it, it also matters how you convey it to people, mm -hmm. you know. And from the way Brother Devney spoke, like, you know, it told me that this is a, is a message for now. Mm. And we need to act to that message now. Amen. Amen. So it took quite a while for me to start watching his videos until a couple of months. Then when I watched one of his videos, I was just watching two, three videos on a daily, on wow. a day. Sure. You know, so yeah. there's a, there was a lot of info. Yeah, so you were just grasping, watch. just eating it up. Yes. <laughs> uh, how did you find out about the uh, Ministry of Present Truth? Well, my brother, this brother that, that I just spoke to you about now, mm. um, he was connected with some other brothers. And you see, this is just how the Lord was working. Mm. And one of those brothers, we had a camp there in the Northern Cape in Uppington, and he invited brother Devon it could be easily four to five years back. Mm. That is how I met him. Sure. Amen. Wonderful. So uh, with that basically said, uh, what is what made you come to this program? Yeah, my brother, it is only God's providence. I thank him for that. It was his providence because he used the sister that was sitting on the other side of the world. She's mm -hmm. sitting there in Australia. Mm. And God used their sister to bless me uh, to come here. I need to acknowledge that and to give God all the honor and the glory Amen. but uh, what I can also say is that God's timing is perfect oh, yes. because uh, I also have a country property and uh, I think it was in his provision that mm. I needed to be here first before I am going to move to the country. Amen. Amen. Uh, so if I may ask also uh, what made you decide to come to this particular training program that was conducted by Messengers President Truth? What made me decide to come here, I believe it's the love of God, you know. Because wow. I, I see the plan God has, God has for us. And if it wasn't for His will, then I was not going to be here. Mm. So I believe the love of God brought me here. And because God loves me, God wants me to show His love to the people out there mm. that are not aware mm. of His love, you know. Yeah. When you saw Brother Devani poster, say now they were opening a a school of prophets for mm. anyone who love to come and visit them mm. to study. Then he, 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 shared, he shared it with me, say, look, this guy is opening a school and you should go there because they will teach you mm. the mm. basic mm. thing that you, you, need to, you need to know about the Adventism, Amen. especially biblically as well. Then he started to, to expound this, the school that first was opened by by Samuel, mm -hmm. yes, that's the what. School of the yeah, the school. Of, yes, that's what they were teaching, like the law mm -hmm. and the music, mm -hmm. sort of. Yes, it started to expand. And then you started to read that chapter as well. Amen, amen. So, time passed. Then you are still emphasizing on emphasizing that. Then I was a little bit reluctant about it because mm -hmm. now, the more I I came across him, the present truth. Yeah, I could see that it was separating me from the world and sure. I still love the world. Sure, sure. So now I still wanted to pursue the world, but even though now I have accepted the the Advent movement. Mm. So now it came to a point now there was there was one thing that I used to do. I, I love, I could say not one thing, I had that one thing that I cherished. Mm. So now I came to the point was like, you know what? I need to stop this thing. Mm. And maybe if I could go to that, uh -huh. to that school of prophets, maybe I will have a purpose in the ministry of God to say what God will want me to do. Wow. 
beautiful, brother. Yeah. Now, uh, what did made you decide to come to this camp? Uh, as myself, as, um, as I was watching, I, this is where I started to say, you know, my life is changing. Mm. Mm. So by the time the, the uh, life, I said, no, there's a change. Why? Because each and every day, by the time I was what I was studying without watching the videos of Brother mm. Devan, I said it was something I was not growing up. Mm. But by the time I started to start to watch the videos of Brother Devan, so this is where I end to mm. say, no, now my life is what is changed. And I said, no, I'm growing. Mm. And it was time, by, the, by the time I was preaching at the church, I said, no, there's many revelation. Christ mm. is what is revealing. So wow. by the time, by that time, uh, one of the day, Brother Devon sent what, a link mm -hmm. in Facebook. Facebook says, so I started what, to, uh, to talk to. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I end here to come and, and study. Wow. Wow. Yes, 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 brother. <laughs> Um, what made you decide to come to the training program? Hmm. So what happened was I came to the Daniel 11 conference and I think that's, oh yeah, no, before I came to the Daniel 11 conference, a sister of mine showed me the poster. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really wanted to come. I even posted it on one of our groups, hoping mm -hmm. that somebody would take initiative and sponsor me. No, nobody came back. <laughs> but um, so we came for the Daniel 11 conference in October this year. Mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, so we got here. The last day we were here, Brother Devonay told us, listen, the bookings are full, mm. but if you guys can come, try to come for December. Mm. And so myself and a sister of mine, we came, and yeah, by God's grace, that's how we got here. Wow, wonderful. What made you decide to, to come to the training program? Wow, initially I'd already been impressed by the messages that uh, Messenger of the President uh -huh. was sending out. And so when they said that they were having this program, I knew that this is a program I wanted to go get, in, get into. Wow. Also, I felt that there was a lack. Mm. I was missing something in my experience. And so I wanted to come and be among people who were studying. Wow. And so when it was said that there's a training program, I definitely wanted to come, so I came here. So having a country experience already, what uh, made you want to come here for this training program? Well, see, that why I came here is because since I can remember growing up, my parents have always wanted to go into ministry. And it has been very difficult because of people persecuting us, even in the church, people don't want us to spread the word. And whenever they did, the people were like, no, you cannot because of this and that. You never went to for education and so I really actually came here so that I can learn to study the Bible and have a deeper experience myself so that I can carry on where my parents had left off because we had basically left <coughs> sorry, we had basically left ministering since we went into the country because of sometimes it was really difficult to we had to work for to provide our things so we didn't have much time to do evangelism and work in the community but lately God has been more I wouldn't say He's been good enough that there is more time now for us. So when the opportunity show, showed up, I remember Brother Devon has sent me the very day he posted the video that, that we're going to have, that he's going to have the MOPT. He sent me the video and he told me I should come. So I told myself no matter what, I'm going there because I want to, it's been always my dream to do evangelism and spread the word of God. That's always been my dream and I always believe that that is also what the Lord has planned for me. So that's the reason why I came. When I came, I saw on the form that you had to fill in that bring overalls with and bring gumboots with because we're going to do working. I told my brother, I'm not coming here actually for the work side. 
I'll, I'll do the work. It's we have to because that's how the school of the prophet was. The children would work and they would study. Right. But I'm coming here for the spiritual training, mm. especially. And I must say, it's it's been a beautiful experience, especially the the studies has been wonderful and. Uh, but the thing that has been most beautiful to me is going out and evangelizing and working with people and seeing how how they come out of the world and they come and listen. They, the people here are so open. The children would leave the movies and the stuff that they would be watching and they'll come and sit and listen to Bible studies. <laughs> Especially with the, the vacation school that we had for the children this week. It has been a very beautiful experience and God has really blessed me a lot. I Amen. Must say. Praise God. What were your expectations for Messengers of Present Truth when you got here for this training program? Well, because the videos that Devon had been posting prior to us coming here was a lot about suffering. <laughs> <laughs> and that um, he was preparing he, he, yeah, he was preparing he, he, we all had this that he's preparing us not to have an easy life but that we need to be prepared for hard times is coming in so when we got here we were all surprised I remember talking to some of the brothers that were here and they were like yeah I didn't expect we we're gonna have showers and each of us individual shower with your nice room and everything and electricity and lights that we were all expecting we would cook on the fire <laughs> outside boil our water in tins on the fire mm. and have to wash in a bucket independently in a little room <laughs> so <laughs> it was actually uh, we were all surprised when we got here and how comfortable they made it for us it, it was it was really nice they went out of their way really to to give the their guests comfort I must say Amen. What were the, your expectations and how did they compare with reality when it is that you first came here? <laughs> well, I didn't quite know what to expect. For example, um, I was expecting to even do my own laundry, for example. And so I brought my own detergent. Wow. Okay, to take care of my laundry. And so I get here and I find, man, there's, there's a washing machine, there's detergent. Mm -hmm. You know, there's hot hot water to you know to shower in, and I'm like, man, this is this is great. So I really appreciated that uh, we were taken care of very well. The food is, is good. Uh, the outdoors are nice, you know, yeah. out there. So there's much that was I was not expecting really. Mm. So they 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 overmet my expectations. Wow, that's that's, that's good. Your expectations, okay, you said you attended the Daniel 11 God, so that means you already initially came. But what was your ex uh, expectations? Uh, with regards to this camp meeting and uh, I don't know how it was the time that the Daniel 11 conference was going on um, yeah. with with what actually was the reality yeah, on the yeah. ground yeah so yeah to be honest my expectations and the reality were sort of leveled mm. except for the fact that I got so many rebukes mm. and I, sh I hope that God works on my heart so that I can reform Amen. but I learned a lot of stuff that I didn't know and wow. so I thank God for shining all this light upon us. And by God's grace, we can take the light, run with it, and share, share it with the world. That's the truth. You see, there's a, there's a way of looking at the light, you know. Mm -hmm. you, you can decide how you want to look at the light, but he's yeah. doing it in love, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's wonderful, brother. Um, uh, now, what was your expectations of, of the camp? And what was the reality when you hit your when your foot came to the ground here? Uh, my 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 my, my, uh, my expectation. Mm. Uh, let me say I was uh, coming here just to uh, to have uh, to, to God to fill me with what with the message. Amen. You understand? Amen. To be rooted. Let me say like this in what in the truth of what of God. You understand? Yes. So after that. My mission, it was my mission is just to what to come and go and advance what mm. the gospel of what of God. You understand? Mm. Amen. So and uh, my my expectation would, as we are about the end of what 
of the of our Lord Jesus Christ to come just to uh, to be connected let me say to be unit united with what with the ministry of what mm. of Christ let me say like this man so yeah. so you, the reality was when you came here you saw everything uh, was good yeah yeah, yeah yes as, as myself yes when I came here yeah everything was yes it was yeah, it was good amen mm-hmm. amen so so on, on that uh, on that note what were your expectations and how did they compare with reality this is now when, when you you came uh, to to the camp uh, what, what was your expectations and how did it meet up with reality oh my expectations they the in fact they they quite uh, sup, they quite surprised me mm. Mm. because when i came here I was having, I had less expectation, but I wouldn't say I had less, but the, the, the experience that they showed me, I had less of it. Wow. Because when I came here, I thought uh, it would be just sort of maybe like, a, because he, he, he used to say, the end he told me, he used to say as Adventists, they will have this, what was the last feast that they will, the children of Israelite they will held of tabernacles mm-hmm. is that service of tabernacles that will, will show them that one day they will become one as a family on the seven mm. seven feasts yeah so he used to say they used to have such events prior COVID mm-hmm. so when I came here I was my I was mixed I was mixed I could say mixed thoughts yeah mixed thoughts, thoughts like that so when I came in, they really surprised me mm. because the, the place, they were very welcoming mm. and the education that we have received and what God has, what God wants to put, what God wants to restore in us mm. that mm. was separated due to the results of sin. Wow. Uh, what were your expectations and how did, it, uh, did they compare with, uh, with reality, with what actually was? taking place whilst you were here. Coming here, I wasn't, I wasn't really expecting much. Mm. You know, whatever it is that they give us to eat, yes. we were just taking whatever, whatever, whatever place they give us to sleep, we just, you know. I, I, I but then sense. I think that has surpassed my expectation wow. because, I mean, the food that <laughs> we are eating here, mm. the beds that we are sleeping in, even the shelter that we are in, yeah. you know, it's, you know, it's a blessing. It's a blessing, yes. And yeah, we just thank God for it. Mm. What were your expectations and how did it compare to reality when you guys landed here? Uh, uh, I wouldn't say that I really had expectations. Mm. I was just um, accepting everything that came in on my path when I came to the camp. For me, brother, what I was I was impressed because I realized that this is the first camp. Mm. But from from being here, uh, it seems as if the uh, school that are uh, established for quite mm. some time, wow. uh, giving God all the honor and the glory as yes. well. They have been, they have been really working hard, and we can see that. Amen, amen. So my expectations, I, I, I also didn't. I expected uh, some of the no. This day, I, I mean, my brother. Hey. <laughs> Exceeded yeah, your expectations. Yeah, this exceeded my expectations. Mm-hmm. I thought that we would have come here and things were out of place and stuff like that for people that are not here so long. Sure, sure. What is one lesson that impacted you or something that you learned that you didn't know that is clearer after the program of all, all the lessons that were? For me personally, there's a lot of things that impacted everything actually, but one of the things that stood out for me is is really the importance of how close we are to the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, that is that is the one of the most important things. Uh, and seeing myself that I am not ready for His coming, and as being the priest of my house, that there is still a lot of preparation work that needs to take place in, in my family. Mm. And uh, the, the thought of when the National Sunday Law comes, because all of us are anticipating that, mm-hmm. but uh, just the thought that uh, whether the National Sunday Law comes, the judgment of the living, mm. Mm. and then the probation that they are starting to close for, for, for the SDA, the people that 
are the last uh, Protestants yes. that have the truth. So that's a solemn. Uh, Clyde, do you have anything that stood out for you during the? Um, I would program? say um, through education because I'm currently being taken out of school to mm-hmm. do homeschooling, and I read in the book Education mm-hmm. that the world and its kindred errors are being taught in school from every grade. Mm. So I would say. Wow, that's wonderful, man. I, I look forward to hearing the, the good news that the Lord will have in your life. Hallelujah. Is there one of the lessons that Brother Devonay taught or maybe even from medical missionary that really resonated with you? May, or maybe something that you knew, but after coming through the program, it's been made so much clearer to you to the point that you can teach it to someone else. I, th- I think the medical mission was one of the things that was a great blessing to me because growing up we had a lot of medical missionary training but ever since we moved to the farm so it was when I was from the age of seven eight we had a whole lot of med- uh, medical missionary training but when we moved out of the farm we didn't have that anymore so a lot of the things that we learned here is is helping me to remember the things that we did learn before and I, it's it's really been a great blessing of course there were many new things that i learned and <laughs> sometimes you're like is this thing going to work and you see it really works and i think the medical mission has been a great blessing to me to know that I can help people with such simple and easy remedies. That, that has been a great blessing. Uh, what is one lesson that impacted you or something that you learned that you didn't know or that is clearer after the program? Because we had a lot of studies, but is there, if there's one thing that, that stood out for you uh, whilst we were having the training program, that Wow, you know, there are many lessons that one could mention that we learned while we're here. Mm. But I think for me, one of the most impactful lessons was where uh, Brother Devaney was mentioning about the, the journey that Christ traveled mm. to gain us back, you know. That brought a tear to my eye to see what depth of, of degradation or pain Christ went through just to redeem me or to redeem us. So for me, that was one lesson which, even though it might have been there, but it came in, a, in, a, in an impactful way, such as perhaps I'd never known before. And so that was to me one of the key points in my, in my, in my lessons here that I learned, yes. Yeah, so, so with, with that basically being said, um, it, 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 it will drive, you believe, and it will drive you in, a, in, a, in, a, in another direction, uh, which you might not have attained had you not attended this. Certainly, certainly. You know, when you begin to see what Christ did for your life, uh, where He was even willing to die, Mm. perhaps not even be able to come back from the tomb, Mm. and yet He would have done a sacrifice for me. That is a story which I must tell others as well. That, you know, the man, the way that Christ loved us has to be of such depth that uh, we are willing to say, I'm sacrificing everything, even if it might mean I'm not coming back. Wow, from that's, that's beautiful. Is there, any, is there anything outside of the, the lessons that had an impact on your time here? Uh, be it evangelism, the medical missionary, uh, Bible studies, if Brother Frank conducted that, or the farm work, the, la- the physical labor that we were involved in. Is there, is there, is there anything that impacted Brother mm. Frank? I would say all those lessons were impactful, were important. But I think one of the key points to me was the the level of intelligence of the people here, the mm. level of spiritual enlightenment that they had. Mm. Um, it is not often that you find people who are so knowledgeable about the truth, about mm. spiritual prophecy, quotations about the Bible, about how to connect the different doctrines mm. together. And one person will say this, and another one will connect that to some other spiritual prophecy quotation, mm. another one will connect that to some text in the Bible. Mm. That to me showed me uh, the impact of studying the Bible and what the Bible can do to people who are studying wow. yeah, all the spirit of prophecy as well. So that would also basically say that uh, we, we can push ourselves to study these things out more uh, instead of just relying on people to teach it to us. Certainly, I believe that there was a time in my life, for example, when I was studying the Bible in a major way. 
and during those times, I discovered how even my own brain was, was enlarging. Uh, I would meet people whose, ordinarily when we meet people we forget, mm -hmm. we, we remember the face, we don't remember the name. That's correct. Okay? But at that time, I could remember the face plus the name plus the place where I had mm -hmm. met them. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that if I can go back to that level of study, mm -hmm. I will find that I'm remembering people's faces, occasions of where we met, yes. and other kind of information like that. Oh, wow. So I, I believe it's quite possible that you know, all of us, as we study the Bible deeper, we can get to that level, yes. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to do anything with age and uh, no, no, no. With, 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 with who's old, who's young. All of us are young and how young we are is based on how willingly we are. I believe so, yes. I don't think the Bible, yeah, yeah. the Lord was saying, I will take care of you even during your whole hairs. Even mm -hmm. when your hair is gray or your beard is gray, yes. he's going to take care of us. So in other words, our relationship with him will just come in, even from that context. Mm -hmm. you know, from that beautiful, level, yes. beautiful. What is one lesson that impacted you or something you learned that you didn't know before uh, the program started? Yeah? One specific thing. Mm. And if it, you have to highlight something. Can it be of anything? It can be of anything, yes. Okay. Um, I couldn't really make bread. Wow. And now I think I'm, I'm decent at that. Amen. Especially flat bread. Like, I didn't even know it was really a thing. Wow. So now I can do that. And in terms of evangelism, mm. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad I learned a lot. Like the combing method, mm -hmm. you know, how we reach the homes. Mm -hmm. And even the survey we did. I'm mm -hmm. taking that back home and I'm sharing it with the people there. Mm. And then learning about medical missionary work. To be honest, I've been acquainted with most of the studies we did. Yeah. But, you know, like medical missionary and mm -hmm. all of that, I, I knew nothing about. Wow. So, by God's grace, I can share it with other people. Amen. We can ask the Holy Spirit to bring it to remembrance, yes? Amen. Um, okay, so you mentioned that the, the medical missionary, we had the med medical missionary expedition going out. Um, did that have any impact? Uh, you know, the Bible studies that we had uh, in town, as well as also um, when we were handing out literature, yes. uh, did that have been any impact on you? Uh, oh, definitely. I mean, I, I really saw God's hand, especially when it comes to the medical missionary part, because mm. I remember there was one sister that came to our, one of our stalls and yes. she got a blood pressure test. Mm. And her blood pressure was too high, like it skyrocketed, it was so high. And then they sent her to get a hot water, cold water therapy. Yes. And once once she got that, they sent her back to do a blood test again, and it was normal. Wow. And, I, and obviously before and after they prayed for her. Wow. And I just thought to myself, wow, this is really God. Sure, a miracle. Like, exactly. That was a miracle. Wow. So that that's something you can always always have stored up just to know how the Lord works. Absolutely. Thank and also just seeing mm -hmm. the humility with which you know the people deal with other people mm -hmm. i learned a, a lot from it i mean there's a sister called sister rose mm -hmm. and i remember one day we went we were in a, a bucky sitting at the back of a bucky and we were stopped we uh, stopped somewhere and little kids just flocked around and i mm -hmm. thought sure what love is what love do they see in this woman hey. so that's inspirational it's like this makes you want to be like jesus more Thank you, brother. What was the results, can we say, with regards to the lessons? What is one lesson that you can say this really stood out for me? Something you didn't know uh, before that you that what became clearer as the studies advanced? Uh, I think as much of, as much of I have many, many different, what, different, uh, 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 let me say, lessons that I, is, I, I was supposed to watch before, before I came here, mm. that I, I was in, uh, uh, focusing to know, let me say like uh -huh. this. Uh -huh. So now, I, I can, let me say, I can say uh, one of one of the le lessons that I can say mm -hmm. about sanctuary. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. the lesson that I can say that I can say uh, when I came here, mm -hmm. uh, it was touching me a so lot uh -huh. of. Why? Because when we are reading in the book of Psalm, Psalms mm -hmm. 77, mm -hmm. it says what the way of what of the Lord is in what in, in the, the sanctuary. You understand? Yeah, so this is what like this wow. is massive. I can I can introduce it. Uh, yeah, like this. Amen. And it's a beautiful mm. message, the century message. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. You, you can't say you have everything all in one. You keep learning more about yes, it. Yes, yes, I keep Truly. learning more uh, bit by bit until, oh. until we, 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 we finish. Yes, brother. <laughs> brother, and then on, on top of that, besides the lessons, mm -hmm. uh, what other things impacted your, your, your time here? You know, in the form of evangelism, mm -hmm. Bible studies, medical missionary, the farm work, what, what also stood out for you uh, in terms of what was done? Uh, I think as myself, I can say um, all of the things that I, 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 I was doing here, mm -hmm. they are, they, all of those things, they are touching me. Wow. You understand? 
And I can say, I can say, uh, medical missionary, uh, I can point through what medical missionary. Was medical missionary, I first, first thing I hear through what, through, uh, through, uh, through online, but the time I was, what, I was watching, you understand? Mm -hmm. But when it comes that they came here, mm -hmm. I something that, that touch me. Why? Because we was doing what theory and what in practical. So when you are doing theory and practical means which, uh, you gain you a gain lot of, mm. you understand? Okay. So this is what I can say in the, maybe I think, it, it, let me say with the evangelism. Evangelism is something that, uh, that touch me. With, now I don't have fear mm. and everything now is what God is what is pushing in mm. what in a way Christ wants others to, what, to receive the gospel. Amen, brother. Yes. What, what is the one lesson that impacted you or something that you learned that you didn't know or that, that is clearer now after the program? Like uh, the one that stands out the most for you? For me, it, is, it must be the prophecy of Daniel. Mm. Mm. Especially Daniel 8 and Daniel 11 mm. and Daniel 12. Yes, the king of the north and the king of the south. Yeah. So when I came here, then Brother Devon started to share with us that prophecy mm -hmm. and said that prophecy, it must be repeated in these mm -hmm. last days. Mm -hmm. So it was quite a, another sphere of... That you that, didn't expect? Yeah, that I didn't expect wow. that I would, I would be able to grasp it because Whenever I'll be reading those chapters, I will struggle what they mean. Sure. I can't sure. seem to understand anything. Mm. Even though I would pray God for give, to give me the Holy Spirit to comprehend, mm. to comprehend this word. But when I came here, He just made it clear mm. and simple. Yeah. Thanks to God who works through him. Amen. I mean, I think there was also a reason why that it was only unveiled. Do you know, God sometimes it takes uh, time, yes? Amen. But, but uh, it's true. I, I can also say that was my same experience of Daniel 11. And it's amazing to see how the prophecies are just lining up so perfectly with what's going on in the world, yes? Amen. Uh, so based on that, brother, is there anything outside of the lessons that, uh, that had an impact on your time here? You know, uh, evangelism, medical missionary, uh, any people that you had Bible studies with, uh, also then the farm work, you know, there was a lot of physical activities that also uh, happened. Is there anything that, uh, that impacted you a lot? Something that impacted me a lot, it must, it must be whenever I'll be going on Sunday mm. to do the evangelism work. Mm -hmm. So, because when we do such way, such, such work for the Lord, we come across different kinds of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their lifestyle, their classes, they are different and their experiences as well. Mm -hmm. They are differ from one another. Mm -hmm. So when we, so when I came to this family with, with my brethren as well, they, they, were, they were two grandmothers and had, I could say had a granddaughters. Yes, as well. Those ones, when we came there, the grandmother was telling us when we were doing the survey, say, how can we help you? Because we, when, we, when we went out for the first time, we had this paper of surveying, say, mm -hmm. how can we reach the community's needs? Amen. But at the same time, preaching the word of the Lord. Yes. So, in that, on, on that part, we say, grandmother, she, she, when we give her that survey, that survey, it was saying how could, if you are interested in Bible study, if you want us to help you with special unemployment rates. So the grandmother touched the un unemployment rate for her granddaughters. Mm -hmm. Then when she touched it, she even gave, gave us an explanation why she touched it. Because mm -hmm. she said her granddaughters are, are unemployed and as a result of they are doing other things that they indulge in self-gratification, like the lifestyle of partying, mm. of um, life amusement, like mm. the pleasure, the worldly pleasures. Yes. Yeah. So when they, when we encountered those daughters, and they were very open to us as well. Mm. 
Then they said they will, we started to share the word of the Lord with them. Mm -hmm. Then when we did share the word of the Lord, then now they wanted, they were very receptive of it. Mm -hmm. Now we said we are going to visit them regularly to every Sunday to come and have Bible studies with them. So now, by the graces of the Lord, yes, we have managed to impact, especially one of them, mm -hmm. that we see that she she's willing to be taught mm -hmm. or she's willing to accept what Christ is doing to us. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, brother. So um, what is one lesson that impacted you or something that you learned that you didn't know or that is clear after the program? So. I know there were a lot of studies that were conducted and a lot of truth shared, but what is one that you would point out as uh, one that you would, uh, you know, take home with you? The one. Mm, that, the stand, one. that stood out for you, that you had troubles maybe understanding or, you know. Okay, we had, we had many lessons, but, you know, the one, the one that stood out for me is the one that we emphasized. Um, it's the one that Brother Devne emphasized on the most, mm. which is true education. Mm. You know, mm. to restore in men the image of his maker. Yes. Yes, so I think that's what's going to go with me. So, so it, you, you gained a lot of insight into that and yes. uh, it, it, makes you, it made you think uh, about what's going on in the, in, mm. uh, you know, out, out in the world and uh, what's your duty. Because, uh, you know, without understanding the true character of God, mm -hmm. We, we, we can never understand who we truly are, you know. Mm. So, it, it, we can see that the reason why the world is in such a condition is because they don't know who their maker is, mm. you know. That's true. So I think it's God is entrusting us because if He didn't, then we're not going to be here. Mm. So if God can trust us with such information, then that means He wants us to distribute it out there. Amen. So, I'm just trusting God for, you know, everything and anything, yes. today or not, whatever happens, you know, just constant submission to God. Amen. Whatever He leads, you know, you go Amen. Amen. by His grace, Amen. by His strength, by His everything. Amen. <laughs> That's beautiful. Is there anything outside of the lessons that had an impact on your time here? You know, like uh, activities that we had, evangelism, medical missionary, uh, people that you had Bible studies work or all, like the farm work because there were a lot of labor activities also taking uh, is there anything that uh, it had an impact on your time yeah. I think outside of the studies I mean like outside of the studies to be honest because without the studies then you're not going to be able to do what you did out there in the community mm -hmm. of greater mm -hmm. so by learning we yeah, are acting you know so especially with the medical missionary stuff, we, we, we also saw that although Christ is God and He could perform miracles and other stuff, He spent most of His time healing, you know, healing people. Just to show that how important health is and how important it is to, you know, to have sympathy for other people because if you, if you, can't, if you can't relate to them on the same level then I don't think we'll be able to help them so we need to feel what they're feeling so that they can open up to you and we can help them to lead them to christ yes, yes. amen uh, uh, is there anything outside of the lessons that that had an impact on your time here you know evangelism the medical missionary uh, expedition uh, bible studies any of the farm work that we had also whilst we were here uh yes brother what it was actually everything but uh, if the medical missionary stood yeah. out god is really pressing on our hearts mm. the importance about the medical missionary yes. work so uh, it was very good uh, we had real nice lessons practical mm. lessons amen there was a lot of and we and we the, some of us also fell sick mm. uh, some of us had flu and the flu just kept spreading from the one brother to the other sister and yes, then yes. back to the brothers again <laughs> But it was also very practical for us to make those flu bombs mm. and to, mm. and because we know that the medical missionary is teaching us that we are not going to rely on all of these efforts that we are going to make, but mm. solely on the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. because He is our true healer. Yeah. So it was very nice to to, to went through that that experience. experience. 
Amen. Thank you, brother. Uh, and, and, and Clyde, did you have anything that stood out for you? Uh, I would say farm work because we have a piece of land that uh-huh. we need to prepare. So Amen. The farm work really. It, 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 it gave you insight of what lies what lies ahead and also encouragement. Yeah. Yes, amen. I thank God for that because He's going to be my right hand man. Amen, amen. So, yeah, this it, is this is a blessing for all, to have Him here. Wow, I can remember the, the the conversation how it was initiated to have Him here, but yeah, mm, mm, the Lord, Lord is, is faithful. Good. Amen, amen. What would you tell someone considering to come? I would uh, like it if both of you can just give your input here. You can go ahead. Okay. I would really encourage everyone to come to the next camp because Jesus wants you to come in you, wants to do something for you and learn you about what's going on in this world in mm. the times that we are living in. Wow, wow, yeah. beautiful. Amen, amen. Brother Ellis, do you have anything to say on that? Yeah, no, I will, I will also add on that to say, my brother and my sister that are listening, do yourself a favor. Uh, my words cannot really express everything that you can come and experience here mm-hmm. every now and then uh, just to be away from all of the influences mm-hmm. uh, being in the country being in the uh, in a place where nothing can really disturb you where you can because it was so nice just to see every now and then if you look around mm-hmm. people that are on their knees weeping uh, crying and then you know they are having that experience because uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, this is something that cannot be compared to anything else. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm. Would you do it again? I would certainly do it again, my brother, wow. if God willing. Okay, oh God willing, yes. Yeah. If there is something that you would tell someone that would, you know, consider coming here, is there, is there, is there anything that you would uh, consider telling them that wanted to come, you know? No. Like, uh, <laughs> is it worthwhile for them if they, 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 they were to come? I mean, there's no way it can't. Because, I mean, the time that you're living in, mm. yeah. So this is a message of urgency, if I can put it that way. Mm. And, you know, God, God's plan is to, God just wants to see us happy, you know. Mm. He, I don't know. You know, I, I think, like by coming here, we got to see how God truly loves us, mm. you know. So you, in, on, on that, you would basically tell someone uh, that they should consider. They should. It's a, it's <laughs> yeah, they, they should consider. Mm. Amen. Mm. Amen. Thank you. Um, then the last uh, question that I have for you is, would you, if, if you could, would you come again? Of course. But then there's work to be done. Mm. Yeah. But, you know, you have come to an end of our studies. Mm. I know many of us don't want to go back home. But because God has entrusted us with responsibilities, then we have to, you know. But then God really, we come back again. Um, what would you consider, uh, what would you tell someone considering uh, to come? I would say, most definitely. Mm. You should come and it will be a life-changing moment, mm. like mm. as it was for me. Because I, now as I'm standing here, I could say I was no longer the, I was no, I am no longer the same person that was when I first came here. I had, I have spiritually, I have spiritually grown, see myself like mm. growing mm. and now I am, I'm more spiritually discerning, discerning as well. And I could say even the environment where our school is situated, it has a lot to help me with such. Amen. Because even, even now we know as Adventists that it is the high time for us to leave out the cities, to mm. go into country living, especially to develop our characters Amen. for the crises that are coming upon the world. Amen. Thank you very much, brother. That's very, very insightful. Uh, this is a question uh, we have to ask you. Would you do it again? Would you come again? Without a doubt, I will come again. <laughs> Amen. What would you tell someone that was considering to come? Uh, as myself, I can say, uh, as myself, I can say to my family, let me say, around, around the world, 
This is the time that you need just to come and what and to receive the gospel. Mm. Why? Because what, uh, when we are reading, the Bible says Christ is preparing his people mm. to receive what? To receive this light. Mm. You understand? He's preparing the people to what? To stand mm. in the time of what? Of trouble. Mm. So as Christ is preparing what? I can say as myself, you, you, you have to come and what? And to see what I see as myself. Because it's true what I'm saying. God is faithful to God is faithful. And what I what what I experience at this moment, I need you as yourself to experience the same thing. Yeah, thank yes. you, my brother. Thank mm -hmm. you very much for that. Uh, would you do it again if you could? Uh yes, as myself, if God permits if God willing, yes, I can I can repeat. Why? Because good uh, where I came from, this is uh, God is giving me a view again to what to repeat again. Amen. Yes, Amen. yes, yes. What would you tell someone considering to come? You better go. <laughs> God will provide finances. Do not complain about it. Do not even, yeah, just pray about it if you need finances. But definitely go to this camp. You'll learn a lot. You'll grow a lot spiritually. And yeah, by God's grace, you'll be used to finish the work. Mm. You'll get Jesus out of that sanctuary quicker. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, would, you, would you do it again? Oh, yes. Uh, hey, by God's grace, we're here next year. Amen. <laughs> amen. What would you tell someone considering to, to come? the training program to message the present truth yeah uh, oh I, I would definitely encourage them to do so because we have gained so much in fact I believe that we haven't even uh, touched the bulk of what we might have studied mm -hmm. but because the time has come to an end we have mm -hmm. to end it but I certainly would invite you know make an invitation for people to come and learn some more yeah you know yeah so considering what brother Frank said I know there were some challenges also with brother Frank and uh, some personal stuff that that try to hinder what was going on here. Mm. But by God's grace, Brother Frank remained here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then based on that, would, would Brother Frank consider coming again? Yeah, certainly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know that for me, it was a bit of a challenge here and there to you know, get my extension to stay in this mm -hmm. country. Uh, however, the extension was made and I was able to stay yeah. until the end of yeah. the program. So uh, certainly for people either from Lesotho or from elsewhere, I would encourage yes. them to come and study here because there's so, so much that they can learn. Wow. You know, wow. Yes. So if a brother or sister came to you and said, hey, Brother Ko, I know you went to Messengers of Present Truth training. I'm thinking about going. Uh, do you suggest I go? Do you have any advice for me? Um, should I go? If I do go, what should I take or how should I prepare? What would you tell this brother or sister? I, I would definitely tell them to go because especially coming together with other brothers, what we found out when we came together, it was beautiful for us because you come together with brethren that's all in one place for one goal and out in the world it's hard to find that so that experience on itself is beautiful because in the evening you would sit and we'd all be discussing what we've been studying during the day and we'd be praying together and even in the morning we'd be eating and it's like we need to finish because it's time to go for class, but we're all discussing spiritual things and from the Bible and spirit of prophecy. And I think that experience alone is very beautiful and helps very much with your spiritual life and growing. So, if given the opportunity to come again, would you take it? Sure. God, God willing, you know, you prayed about it and yeah. he says it's okay. <laughs> but would you do the program again? I, I would definitely do the program again. The, 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 one of the reasons why I do the program again is because of the evangelism. So even though you might be relearning some stuff here, there's always something new you learn when you do evangelism. You never stay the same on the same space place where you were before so going out and meeting new people strangers people who grew up in different religions and cultures and stuff 
I think that when they decided that Sundays we devote to evangelism, I don't, I don't think they made a mistake with that. I think lots of the people came here. I believe everyone learned a lot through the evangelism. I think that was one of the things that they can take back and practice for themselves at home with the community now. So I think that's a great blessing. What are your plans when you return home? How do you foresee that you will be able to use what you've gained here um, back home or what are you hoping to accomplish in the field um, that God has placed you currently? Well, I do know that back home it is it's not going to be as easy as it was here because back home people are not as open as they are here in this side. So my plan is to do exactly what I've learned here, to do it back home. I want to evangelize the same way we did here, but I also know that the church is waiting for me to come and teach there as well. So there, I don't know what's God's plans for me there, but will he, if He's willing, I will go and teach there as well at the church. But my main goal is to do evangelism amongst young people. That is my main goal when I go back. So that is what I really want to do. What are your plans going forward, Brother Frank? Okay, uh, as for my plans, the Lord willing, I want to uh, continue a, uh, a ministry back home. Uh, we want to publish some, paper, some documents, some literature for the people. Not only that, we want to distribute some great controversy books, as well as the uh, Ministry of Healing mm -hmm. uh, to some uh, notable people. Mm -hmm. And um, also, uh, talk to our leaders about some prohibitions that we'd like them to implement uh, that are destroying people. Amen. Yes. Amen. What are your plans uh, going forward after leaving the camp? Amen. Um, so before I came to the camp, literally the weekend, it just weighed heavily upon my mind that like we need to do more evangelism mm. and also to work with the church because we, were, we had a family, we were had lunch at another place and there was this family, Adventists all their lives but they knew nothing about country living. Their, their knowledge on Adventism was limited. Mm. And it just made me feel like, like God, yeah, I just really wanted to be used to, you know, share the message with them. And so by God's grace, yeah, I still have to pray about this, but what we're planning is after church every week, we're gonna invite some people to our home, mm. have lunch and then do studies with them. Amen. And then during the week, depending on, you know, work, uh, we're planning on definitely combing our area mm. and getting Bible study contacts, sharing the word that way. Man, wonderful brother. What are your plans uh, going forward? Uh, you know, there's a lot of plans that you might be considering after this. As you said yourself, this was a life-changing experience for you. Uh, what do you think the Lord has planned for you? My plans going forward from now was to open, was to venture into Kyle Portal. Mm. Yes, because prior to come here, I was contemplating of doing such ministry mm. because I could see that in in my neighborhood where I am, yes, we, we do have people who are doing evangelism, mm. but it, it didn't have the means to purchase those books mm -hmm. and hand it out to people. Yes. So where I saw that need, so that's where I thought Say, may the Lord help me on that one. Mm. If it's His will for me to venture into Calpata ministry. Amen. That's beautiful, brother. So, Dio, what are your plans uh, for the future going forward? Okay, the plans is just to continue the work, you know. And, you know, wherever God leads, may He give us the strength to follow okay. Him. Yes. That's, okay. that's the plan on what. Okay. So, we, we, can't really the... we can't really see what's there, but. Where God points us, then may He give us the strength to follow. Yes. Let's go wherever He Amen. wants Amen. us to go. To know what are your plans uh, going forward? My brother, like like Lady also said, now 
uh, if God willing, then from here we need to go and prepare our own place and uh, first set up because there's no structures, no buildings there. Yes. We first have to set up our own house and from there we are going to turn it also into a place of worship. Mm. Amen. Amen. So we trust in the Lord for everything that He will avail. Uh, hallelujah. But we take the first step today. Hallelujah. What, 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 what I also learned that if we look at the experience that Mary and Joseph had with, with uh, Jesus while he was still a boy, when they forgot him there at the temple, mm. uh, it took them three days to just reconnect with him again. Mm. So uh, one of the lessons were that it can be possible for someone to come to the church and then to leave Jesus behind. Mm. So I need to take what I've learned, I need to take it with me, my brother. I really need to take it with me. Amen.